This video is brought to you by Carter Enterprises, serving all your technology needs. Hey everybody, this is the uh, video I've been promising you on showing you how to get into these uh, very hard to get into netbooks. Um, also, these are the parts of that customer I was telling you about. This is the Asus ePC. It's um, one of their top of the line netbooks. It's a 12.1 inch screen. Comes with 2 gigs of memory, um, the N330 dual core Intel Atom, um, and I believe a 250 gig or 500 gig hard drive. What we're going to be doing today, which I do with most of my customers um, netbooks when we get them, first thing we're going to do is upgrade it to uh, 4 gigs of memory from the two. Next thing, which is one of the biggest boosts, is we're going to throw in one of these OCZ Oxy Series SSDs. Um, I actually use pretty much the identical one, except for mine is the Vortex Series, which is a little bit higher than this. But this does a phenomenal job. It's extremely fast. And then because it's only 3 or 2 gig storage, for her to back up some of our extra files and her music, 16 gig um, SDHC card, which now you can get these up to, I believe, 32 and maybe even 64 now, depending on where you look. I know overseas you can get them bigger. Um, but I'm going to go through and show you how to get this open. One of the big problems on these, as you can see, the only thing that you can easily get to is the memory. To actually get to the hard drive on this, you've got to take off this whole plate, and then beneath here is where your hard drive's at. It's right about here. It's nicely secured in there. The problem is it makes it a pain to get to. So I'm going to walk you through that. Um, next here I'm going to show you the tools that aren't necessarily all required, but they are good to have. I'm going to have a better detailed picture of these so you can see what they are a little bit better um, during this commentary, but one of the key things that you must have as a computer technician that I found is just unbelievably good is the 4-in-1 you know, little screwdrivers like this. Mine happens to be from Ace, but you can get them anywhere cheap for $1 or $2. Um, these are invaluable because 90% of the stuff you're going to run into, this will work. Um, for this little netbook, this is something that's extremely important. Is you have to have one of these micro screwdrivers, uh, Phillips bits. One thing I'll say is I used to have the metal sets that were all the different metal pieces. This actually works a lot better. This is made by Husky, and I actually think I got a picture of the serial number so you guys can find it. Uh, Home Depot sells these. But it keeps all the bits in the back and actually gives you more sizes. Now something that's optional for this build but is not optional for some of the Toshibas and I believe Acers that are out there, some of the newer ones that just came out, is a micro torque set. They've actually changed their base plates to be torques now, so it's harder to get into because they're very small torques. Um, and most people don't have micro torques on them. It's just something I've noticed throughout the community. Next thing that you have to you have to have is either a USB flash drive with whatever operating system you want, whatever flavor. Um, which is the easiest way to do it, or you can grab a external CD-ROM or DVD-ROM and plug that into it, which is a little more time-consuming and it actually is slower. This will install a lot faster, especially with an SSD. Now, something that's also um, not necessary but is helpful, depending on if you drop a screw or if you got a clip that you can't get out, is these right here. These are really good for if you need to get in somewhere really deep and tight, or if you need some power behind it. Very cheap. It's a three-set that comes with a cutter as well. Um, they're only about 10 bucks at Sears, something like that. Um, but as you can see, I'm not recording this at the office because the office is not set up for recording right now. I've got to change it around. But this is going to be one of my first somewhat live videos. I'm going to be doing a lot of editing in the back end. But I'm going to get into it and show you what's going on. Okay, the very first thing you have to do is you've got to pull your battery out. And I know I'm probably going to start hearing some noise from some people in the community about me not wearing an anti-static bracelet. From my experience of the years I've been doing this, I've found that creates more problems than it helps. As long as you're not somewhere where you know, you're know you constantly feeling that you're shocking yourself on things, you'll be fine. Um, and granted, most of the time I'm going to go over and touch one of my computer cases, ground myself, make sure I don't have any static charge left on me, before I start delving into one of these systems. Um, 
Also necessary for this build is the world's best scissors, made by Cutco. Unbelievable. We get into this parent-proof packaging. I'm going to open this up now so we have it when I get this case open. These things just cut through anything with these. You can actually cut a penny in half with these, and they stay sharp. That very first thing that you're going to do, pull off the bottom here, and this is where a flathead can be helpful because they actually make this an extremely tight fit. One caveat here, hold your screws when you do this. I don't know how many times I've lost screws trying to pop these off because they just come loose just enough to fly out of there. Pop out the old memory here, which is actually one thing they do use at Asus. They do use some good memory. This is Kingston. Um, it's actually some pretty good memory. Never have problems with it. I've got some PNY here, which is also decent memory. Works very well. And this is just standard memory installation. If you know how to do this, you can skip this. Um, so that's just the standard stuff. Uh, one thing I do do, though, when I'm working on this one, because of the way this thing comes apart, I leave the back plate off. It just makes it simpler for me. It's a personal preference. You don't have to do it. Okay, the next stitch, stage, since I can't speak, I just said stitch. The next stitch, it's a new term, it's a stitch. Uh, I'm going to get all this protective junk off here, because I can't stand this when I'm working on a computer. Ooh, it's sticky. Okay. Now this is something you got to be very careful with. Um, I've never been able to accomplish it, nor have any of my texts been able to do it perfectly, ever. So don't expect that you're going to get a perfect result on this. Because um, you're always going to make a little bit of a mark on the upper part of the case there. When you're trying to get the keyboard out here. As you can see, I'm doing this slightly ghetto. Okay, finally got some headway here, because this thing is really hard to get out. Um, the way I finally got the keyboard out, which is what you have to do, um, is got a screwdriver underneath there, got a, uh, well it happens to be my driver's license, but got it up under here, and popped it up and out. Once you do that, there's going to be one of these ribbing cables that you just got to pull out, remove the keyboard. Now here's where the fun begins. Remember how I was talking about how this whole case has to come off? Well, you've got about 20 little internal screws here, and this is why I like having my pliers. But you've got to pull out, which again are, all the internal ones are the same size, so if you keep all those together, you'll be fine. You can see where the hard drive is. Right now it's probably blocked by my hand while I'm taking out these screws. And I'm sorry about the weird cut scene there. I just got really aggravated because these are more complicated than they need to be to open. And when you have big hands like mine, it gets even harder. But 